Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to build Apache Cordova apps using Visual Studio. We're going to start at the very beginning and then gradually start looking at the functionality that both Apache Cordova and Visual Studio provide for allowing you to use web technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build apps that run on Android, iOS, and Windows devices. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, let's just start at the very beginning. Let's start with what is Apache Cordova. Apache Cordova is a framework, and it allows you to write apps for Android, iOS, and Windows platforms. Now, the way you do this is pretty interesting. The way you write Apache Cordova apps is by writing in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It doesn't matter that you might need to know C Sharp or C++ for Windows apps, or Java for Android, or Objective-C or Swift for iOS. You can get away with just writing web technologies that you're probably familiar with, which is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and have Apache Cordova take care of providing all the functionality needed to have your app work beautifully on all these various devices. And the way this really works is this. In order to build an app for Apache Cordova, you have to have, uh, there's some setup work that goes into it. You have a lot of dependencies you need to install, Node, Google Chrome, the command line tools for Git, Apache Ant, Java, and so on. And installing these dependencies is only one part of what you need to do. The next part is configuring them, not only the dependencies you installed, but also just your environment in general for being able to support Apache Cordova development. That includes command line targets, environment variables, so various build systems know what to do, deployment details, and web servers, and so on. All of these things are not hard, but they are time consuming, and oftentimes just things that you may not really be interested in doing. And after all, you and I probably just want to build really cool apps. Setting these things up wouldn't it be great if it was sort of taken care of for you? In many ways, we asked ourselves that same question on the Visual Studio team, and we said, yes, I think there is a way to make it more streamlined when you want to build these kinds of apps. So to help you with all of this, you have the Visual Studio tools for Apache Cordova extension. This is a small installer that gives you not only all the setup and environment configuration I showed you in the previous slide, but it also takes care of some of the code editing and authoring and debugging functionality that I will be showing you in a, in a few moments. So with all that said, let us go ahead and jump into a Hello World demo, and then we can go into more detail on what's going on. So let me escape PowerPoint. So I have Visual Studio running, and the version of Visual Studio I'm going to be demoing things on is the version 2015 preview. But if you're running Visual Studio 2013, don't worry. Everything I'm going to show you works identically between both of the versions. So I have the Studio, and what I want to do is create a new Cordova app. And what I need to do for that is create a new project. I can either go to File, New Project, or I can just click on a new project link, which I'm just going to do, going to do right now. So New Project Dialog is basically the place where you get to create your project. You get to see all the various languages and platforms that are currently supported by your Visual Studio installation. And because our Cordova apps are JavaScript-based apps, find the JavaScript node and click on the Apache Cordova apps category. And what I'm going to do at this point is we have the blank app, which is the project template that we come out of the box with. And I want to give my project a name. Let me call this my video demo. Keep it simple. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So after a few moments, your project will get created. The first thing you'll see is a Getting Started screen that gives you some helpful information if you need it. I'm going to go ahead and close it. The place to first take a look at is the Solution Explorer. This is a location that gives you an overview of all the files and folders that currently make up your project. So you'll see some folders that are probably very familiar to you, the CSS, images, and scripts directory, where your style sheets and images and code will live. You'll also see some folders like merges and res, which are very Cordova specific. The merges folder is where you put your platform specific overrides, content that you want to light up only on a particular version of a uh, particular version of a platform. And you have the resources directory, the res directory, where you specify splash screens and icons and other things that are slightly, you know, a little bit external to what you might be dealing with as you're writing your, writing your code. So what I'm going to do next is just double click on index.html and have it be opened in my project. So first of all, notice what you see when you open up the HTML file. It is standard HTML. It is no different than what you might have been using for many, many years. You have an HTML tag, you have standard HTML elements, and you, it's essentially no different 
than a, a web page. And I have my HTML page. So let me go ahead and just preview what my application looks like. So here's where some really cool stuff happens. To preview your application, you'll be spending a lot of time in the debug toolbar area. Because Apache Cordova apps you know, target, can be targeted against Android, iOS, and Windows devices, are the point, you, know, you make several choices as part of previewing your application. First is, what platform are you targeting? Right now, I have the option for Android selected, and you can choose between Android, iOS, and various flavors of Windows platforms. And depending on what you select, what you can actually deploy to will vary. Because I selected Android, the options are device, Android emulator, and this could be Jenny Motion, the Google Stock Android emulator, or even our new Microsoft Android emulator. It doesn't matter, any Android emulator you can choose from here. Or you can also use Ripple, which is a great browser-based simulator for testing how your application works very quickly without having to deal with the sometimes the slowness of an emulator or the inconvenience of having a physical device. So for now, I'm just going to stick with Ripple, and I'm going to go ahead and hit play. So at this point, when I hit play, your project is being built. It is being compiled into the appropriate package format that Apache Cordova will take care of for you. So I am now waiting for the project to load. And in a few seconds, you'll see the application. And what Ripple does, it allows you to simulate how your application would behave on a physical device despite being inside a browser. And you have various categories of toggles that you can play with to simulate device behavior. Right now, I can I expand a devices category. I can change orientation from what it shows up as portrait to landscape, for example. And in this mode, if I happen to have media queries that were active only on the landscape case, or if I happen to have certain code that only executed when the, when the device was longer than it is taller, that code will execute as well. And you have additional settings for the accelerometer, battery status, the geolocation, and various other things. Ripple is a very quick and easy way to be able to build your application and preview it without having to deal with any of the extra things that emulators and devices bring to the table. So let me quickly just you know make its change. I have, let me go back to index.html. Remember, because it is Visual Studio, you have a lot of great code editing functionality. And right now for text, I'm just going to type in hello, comma, world, and I'm going to hit save. And one of the functionality that we provide is as part of making markup changes, like let's say you change the text from one to another, we automatically refresh your document in the Ripple when Ripple is running and display the current content as well. So I type some text, and text isn't really a great example of showing you the, some of the, co the code functionality that Visual Studio provides. So let me go a little bit further. Let me actually add a style rule. I'm going to add the style, style region, and let me type in the body selector. Notice that you get brace completion. You also get some statement completion as well. You'll see in a second when I do background color. You get IntelliSense, and I'm gonna let's pick a color. Let's pick a let's make it let's make it yellow. A solid FFD 800. All right, I'm gonna hit save. And at this point, when I hit save, just like before, where I typed in some text and hit save, my application is being redeployed, and Ripple is going to display the yellow color for me. It was a fantastic way to, especially in the early stages of your development, make some changes and see how it looks in your in your device. So now I'm back in the Visual Studio. Okay, so right now you've added some markup, changed some text. All that is great. And you saw how it works and how Ripple makes it very easy for you to see your changes as you are making them. Now, a large part of your time, though, will be spent writing code and also debugging code. So what I'm going to do is continue the demo that we have already started by showing off some of the code editing functionality that Visual Studio provides, in addition to the debugging functionality you also have available. So great. So I have Hello World. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a button. I'm going to add a button and have the text be change color. And let me go ahead and give the button an ID value so I can reference it from code easily. Button ID equals, let's keep it simple, let's give it change color as well. Great. So I have some code for so I have that, so great. So I have my button, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some code that allows me to interact with whatever happens as button gets clicked. And for that, I'm going to open index.js. Index.js contains some code already. Basically, the thing that it contains is a device ready event. With Apache Cordova apps, because they're not really 
web applications running in the browser, because Apache Cordova apps aren't really applications running in the browser, running in a device, events like load or DOM content loaded oftentimes aren't adequate for making sure your application is truly ready to accept custom code that you have written. So the platform provides you with a custom event called device ready, which is more appropriate for ensuring your code runs only when your application is ready to receive additional commands. So on device ready is the event handler that is called when device ready event is overheard. So I'm going to put some code right here that I want to execute immediately once my application is ready. So instead of showing you how to write code and all of that, I'm going to copy and paste some code in instead. I already have it written in Notepad, and I'm going to paste it in right here. And the code I pasted is pretty simple. In my markup, I added an HTML element with a button and gave it an ID of change color. All I'm doing here is writing some code to listen for a click event on that button. And when a click event is overheard, called set random color event handler. And this event handler changes the background color of the body element with the color returned by the get random color function. And the get random color function is pretty simple. It just returns an RGB value that is randomly generated to ultimately give me a hex color, a hex value that changes each time it gets called. In fact, let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm going to go back to Ripple and just see what's happening. So your product's getting built, Chrome is being launched, and Ripple is loading the application behind the scenes. So this will take a second. And while this is happening, you can see that in Visual Studio, the DOM Explorer actually comes up. If you ever use the DOM Explorer or have used you know, in-browser debugging tools, the DOM Explorer allows you to visually inspect all the various elements that are going on in your page and then see the markup that is associated with it highlighted. It's a great way of being able to inspect the values of your running application, uh, sorry, the markup of your running applications very easily. And you have a styles panel where you can change all the various stylings that are currently impacting it at this very moment. Cool. So let me go back to Ripple and I have change color button. If my code works properly, the background color will change as I keep pressing a change color button. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to hit change color. Notice that each time I hit change color, the background color I'm going to hit change color button. Notice that each time I hit the change color button, the background color changes. It changes each time. That is really pretty neat. So when I hit the change color button, I notice that each time I click on this button, the background color changes. That's pretty cool. So now imagine that the code does not work properly. And in this case, everything worked fine. But oftentimes when you're building your application, sometimes your code might not work as you would expect it to. And because this is just JavaScript, you have many tools that you can use to inspect your code and try to figure out what's going wrong. You can use console commands. You can even use alert statements if you so want to. But one thing that Visual Studio provides is really good debugging support for JavaScript elements. So for example, what I'm doing here is I'm setting a breakpoint on the body element line. And let me just go ahead and hit the change color button one more time. And notice when I click this button, Visual Studio is flashing. It's flashing because the breakpoint has been hit. What this means is at this point, my code has stopped. And I can now inspect the state of my application at this line of code before it has executed. I can use the various tooltips by hovering over the element objects and seeing all the properties and their values as they need to. I can use the console. I can do all of the common debugging functionality that I might have always wanted to do in, in the past. So all that familiarity you have with debugging your applications carries over beautifully to Apache Cordova apps as well. And it's a massive time you know, saver in that I can now step into my code. I can jump over functions. I can do all the things that I would have wanted to do to quickly identify the problem and hopefully also be able to, able to fix it. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the breakpoint and just continue my application. Hit continue. And just continue. And they see that I can make some changes. I can see the code. And everything just picks up from where it left off. This is pretty cool. So. Now, though, what I've shown you is just how debugging works for 
for Ripple. And are currently, we support debugging support for Android 4.4 and above. And for versions of Android 4.4 and below, you can use a bridge like JS Highbugger and be able to debug them after written for that version of Android. And we also support debugging for Windows Store applications as well. Now, what's really cool, though, is that we've also now added support for being able to debug apps for iOS. And to help you explain what's going on, I'm going to go back to my slides a bit, talk a little bit about how building apps for the iOS works, and then talk about how to configure your Visual Studio to be able to target iOS applications. So I'm going to go back to my slides. And what I'm going to show you here is a little bit of an overview of what happens under the covers when you're building applications. And what happens varies depending on whether you're building a Windows or Android app or whether you're building an iOS app. The reason is that you spend all of your time in Visual Studio. That's where you see front and center. That's where you write your code. That's where you do your debugging and your visual diagnostics. All of the action really happens in Visual Studio, at least the action that you can see. Behind the scenes, you have various components at play that take the code you write and pass it on to the various components that are responsible for creating the final package, the final Android package, the iOS package, or the Windows package, to allow you to test your application and make sure everything works fine. Some of those components are MS Build and VS MDA. These components are largely responsible for acting as a mediator between what the Cordova platform expects and what you're actually generating as creating your application. Now, on Windows and Android, this is pretty straightforward. All the components live on your primary development environment, and Cordova takes your input and then uses the native tools to build the APK for Android or the app file for iOS and the Apex for Windows. Pretty straightforward. For iOS, things are a little bit more different. Because building an iOS package that runs on an iOS simulator or an iOS device requires components that are only available as part of the Mac environment, we actually have a separate component called the VSMDA remote agent. This is a very simple node package that you need to launch that listens for source files being passed in by VSMDA. And once it detects source files, it goes ahead and builds them and packages them and uses all of the various build tools to create the .app file that you ultimately need to deploy to an iOS simulator or device. And we make it pretty easy for you to configure it. So let me go ahead and give you a demo of how all of that stuff works. Because in order to test for iOS, there are three things you need to do. The first thing is, in the terminal on the Mac side, you need to install the VSMDA remote tools agent. Pretty simple, just run this command. Then once you have done that, you need to receive a certificate that allows you to have a secure connection between the remote agent and what you're currently building on the Windows side. And then once you've received a certificate, you need to run the agent. There's also a little configuration you do in Visual Studio, and I will show you all of that right now. So I want to go back into Visual Studio. OK, I'm going to exit PowerPoint. Let's go back to Visual Studio. And so what I want to do is I want to test for iOS. I'm going to go ahead and select the iOS entry in my platform dropdown. And once I've done that, you can now see the deploy the debug targets that are available are now suitable for iOS settings. You have various Ripple deploy targets for iOS, and you also have the simulator settings for iPads and iPhone 5S and all of the various iOS devices you have available right now. And also, if you have a tethered device or a remote device, you can go and specify them here as well. What I want to do is let's go and build for the for the iPhone 5. Okay, now. If I were to just hit build right now, things will not work as expected because, like I mentioned in the slides earlier, I don't actually have my, you know, my build agent or my remote server currently configured to support building for iOS. So I'm currently on a Mac device right now, and I have Parallels running. That means I also have an OS X, OS X instance running behind the scenes. So I'm going to quickly switch over to the OS X side. So I'm currently running my machine on a MacBook Pro, and I have Parallels running to run both Windows and OS X simultaneously. 
So what I'm doing right now is I want to switch back into the Mac side of the house, and I'm going to go ahead and launch the terminal. And what I'm going to do is run some of the commands I showed you earlier. So I already have the VSMDA agent installed, so I'm not going to install it again, but I will need to generate a client certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and type in VSMDA remote generate client cert. And let's make sure you can actually actually see what's going on here. Let me zoom in a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Once I've done this, you'll see that the certificate gets generated. And you'll see a security pin that appears that is very important for me to be aware of. And the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just run the VSMDA remote agent by typing in VS-MDA remote. So at this point, you'll see that remote build express server listening on a secure port 3000. So all I need to do now is as I'm building my application in Visual Studio, I need to make sure that it communicates to the build agent running at this location. Let me go back into Visual Studio. And I want to go to Tools Options. And I want to find the options that are applicable to the Cordova tooling. So the Tools for Apache Cordova Apps category and find the remote agent configuration variable. So I have, there's an option for enable remote iOS processing. By default, it's set to false, but I've already set it true from having done it earlier. And I need to enter the host value and a security pin. So the security pin I have right here it is 226894. Let me go ahead and copy that in and paste it in here. And I also need my host ID as well. And the easiest way of doing that is just to go into my network preferences and just get the, get the IP address I'm currently connected on. So right now, I'm connected to the Microsoft network on 10.104.12. I'm going to copy that and, and input that copied value into by here. Oh, happened to be the same value as I had before. OK. Once I made these settings, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to say I'm done configuring my iOS settings. Now, all that's left is to go ahead and preview my application on the simulator using the iPhone 5 setting that I chose earlier. So meaning play. So at this point, my build output has been created. It is being sent to the remote build agent that is currently running. And if everything works out appropriately, my I'll be switched over, as you can see, to the to the Mac side of the house. And my application launches, and you can now see my application running in the iPhone 5 simulator. If I can change color, you see the color changes just as I would have expected. That is pretty cool. So not only can we just be able to deploy the app and launch it on an iOS simulator or device, we also support debugging on the iOS as well. So the way you do that, let me go ahead and stop the debugging right now, is just like you did before. Set a breakpoint, hit play, and everything will work just as you would have expected and just as you would have seen, uh, as you saw earlier, with just being able to use Ripple. It's all pretty awesome. So I hit play again, and let me go back to the Iowa simulator, and let me hit change color. So as expected, I am back in Visual Studio. The breakpoint has been hit, and now I can follow my usual workflow for identifying and fixing any issues with my code. The only difference from what I showed you earlier with Ripple and what I'm showing you now is that the context that my debugger is running against is not the browser. It's not the version of WebKit running inside the browser. It is the application running on the iOS simulator. If I had a device attached, the exact workflow would be similar. I would have just chosen a device target from the debug dropdown. Now, so far, I've shown you how to debug using Ripple. You can also debug Windows Phone, Windows 8.1 apps, and also Android devices and Android emulators in much the same way. So I'm not going to spend any more time showing you all this functionality. Instead, I'm going to pivot a little bit and show you some additional cool things that, we, that we're going to provide you with some support on. So I'm going to go back to my slides. And let's go ahead and look at the, the next and last step in what I'm going to be showing you. An important part of building applications running your devices is so that you can access device capabilities, your camera, your microphone, your accelerometer, your GPS, all these things that are often off limits to the native browser because of security restrictions that web content has. To work around this, 
Apache Cordova introduces the concept of something known as plugins. And what plugins do is they allow you to mediate between the JavaScript that you write and the device capabilities you want to access. So the way this works is pretty simple. What The way your application is structured for both iOS and Android and WWA is very similar. You have a container that containers the web view control for iOS and Android. It is the Windows web application host, short for WWA host, in the Windows web application world. And your application code runs inside it. And your application code is very much isolated for the most part, except for what's, except for the plugins that allow you to cross between the container that contains all of your application code and the application code that is responsible for interacting with device capabilities. So out of the box, we provide you with a bunch of plugins that you can easily add to your application. Battery, camera, your contacts, your device motion, all these things, they're all available for you. And the way we're going to do it is very simple by using a cool functionality that we've made much better in our most recent release. So let me go ahead and demo that for you right now. Let me escape my slides and go back into not Launchpad, but Widget Studio. Let me go ahead and open another project. This one, the project has already been built, so I'm not going to do much copying and pasting either. This is the, the to-do sample that we currently have on our landing page. It's an AngularJS sample that very simply, and this run it on Ripple itself, is a very simple to-do application. You have a very basic UI for being able to add notes and for being able to remove notes as well. So the application is currently launching. All right, so my application is launched. And I'm just going to type in some items here. Finish recording. I'm going to hit Enter. And in a second, you'll see that my note has a part of right now shows up here. The other one is continue testing this app. Nobody likes silence. OK, this has dragged on for far too long. OK, so now I have some notes on how I'm going to make sure I'm finishing this video. You know, no awkward silences and not rat holing on any one area for too long. OK, so I have my application. Great. So what I want to do, though, is I want to be able to use accelerometer or being able to where if I shake my application, all these notes get deleted. In my application, I have all that code already you know, implemented. So the way it works is on my on device ready event handler, the same one you saw earlier when I was listening for the change color button clicks, I, I'm calling the accelerometer using the Cordova plugin syntax, which is navigator dot accelerometer dot watch acceleration. And then I have code that basically goes through and detects when acceleration takes place, and then it clears the contents of my of my app as needed. And the interesting part is if I were to just add this line of code and hit play, the functionality would simply not work. And the reason is that it goes back to what I mentioned before. By default, the security settings make it very difficult for device capabilities to be accessed from just normal HTML containers like your WebView control. So I need to basically add a plugin. So what I've done is I've gone to the new config XML designer and I've hit the plugins tab. What this tab allows you to do is quickly see all the core plugins that are available for me to use right now. For example, device motion is one that I've already added. So it's already showing up in with a green check mark next to me. But if I want to add the battery, for example, I can just click on the add button and then the battery will be added to my project. It is, involves both adding some files to the application as well as changing some configuration files to communicate to the application that the battery is now something that we want to add. And of course, if I have some custom plugins that are a part of my project or I'm in an organization or I just have my own personal Git account where I have all these plugins in a repository, I can specify the path to the Git repository as well. And the install, the install tab gives me a quick overview of all the plugins that I currently have installed. But because I already have the device motion plugin already added, this is the one that is going to be allowing me to detect accelerometer, accelerometer signals. Let me go and just remove the battery. I really don't need the battery right now. Hit remove. And device motion already works. So my application is already running. And so to test accelerometer, the easiest way is to attach a device 
and then just shake the device to make sure that the, the shake code path gets hit. Because I'm using Ripple and because I'm doing a screen recording, it's kind of hard to get a device and have it show up on the screen. But luckily, one of Ripple's accelerometer simulations is not only being able to manually modify how my applications x, x axis, y axis, and z axis values you know, change, there's a little shake command that literally simulates what almost seems like an earthquake happening inside your screen. So when I hit that, I'm going to go and just minimize this information tab and hit the shake button. And when I click on shake, you'll see the frame shaking and the code will run to ensure my screen is cleared of all notes. So I'm hitting shake. And you can see the, the screen moving back and forth. And in a few seconds, OK, not sure. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now the items have disappeared. Not sure why there was a small lag. Must be a demo bug. I will deal with that. Deal with that later. So yeah, so with that, we are really at the tail end of what we talked about. You know, you just saw a very quick overview of how to build an app, how to preview it, how to debug it. You saw a little bit about how plugins work. And along the way, you learn a little bit about how the architecture of Cordova, how Visual Studio, and how your Cordova apps are built all tie in. So all that is left is for you to download the extension. And we're very active on Stack Overflow and Twitter and also email. So if you ever have any questions or you need any help, just feel free to ping us on whatever channel is most comfortable for you. And then my name is Karupa. You can email me at karupac at microsoft.com. I'm always open to hearing from you on what you like or don't like about our tools. And also, if you're an active user of Apache Cordova projects and you want to give us feedback or maybe even be involved in secret upcoming things that we haven't quite talked about publicly yet, send me an email. And of course, follow me on Twitter, at Karupa. All right, see you guys later.